want to bring in House Homeland Security Committee Chairman, Congressman Michael McCall now. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks, Karina. A lot of things I want to get to with you, uh, but first you tweeted about the Russian diplomats today, um, commending the White House for expelling them from a security standpoint. Mm -hmm. What does this signal? Well, the Russians have been uh, very dangerous, very aggressive, whether it be in Crimea, Ukraine, Baltic states, meddling in our elections, which I said from day one. They were doing. They should have been called out. There should have been consequences. This latest uh, nerve agent uh, that was used in London on the former Russian spy who flipped over to the uh, the British side uh, was a very uh, extraordinary event. And it, it signals that if, if these uh, nerve agents are floating around the, the world, um, we need to respond to that. And I think it was a good response to expel 60 dip diplomats and close down the Seattle, Washington consulate office. Um, when it comes you know, to Russia, you've been critical of President Trump in the past just for not outright condemning Russia, especially when it comes to uh, meddling in the 2016 elections. Last week, of course, Trump congratulating Putin on his re-election. Where do you stand on Trump's response to Russia? I think he was being diplomatic, but I think the, the problem, as I see, is that the rhetoric doesn't match uh, the uh, acts or, you know, what we're doing with the Russian sanctions that Congress passed, uh, expelling these diplomats. Those are pretty tough actions we're taking against Russia, but then when the rhetoric comes out, it's always uh, it seems to be more friendly towards Mr. Putin. I always say consistently, Mr. Putin is not our friend. Um, he's been one of the most aggressive uh, presidents they've had. He wants to take, take it back to the Soviet Empire days of a great czar. And then he's been extremely aggressive taking over territories, uh, some, you know, bragging about it being off the coast of the United States and going undetected, uh, there has to be a, a strong response from the United States. I want to switch gears um, and ask you about the Austin bombings investigation. Of course, you've uh, been in on this and uh, talked a lot about this over the last couple of weeks. Earlier today, you were told Fox News that one of the bombers' roommates is still being considered as a person of interest. Explain this to us. Why is he still being um, uh, interviewed and being looked at? Uh, they uh, had detained and asked him questions. They're still asking him questions about what he knew uh, with respect to the bombs that we know were being made in the house and in the home. Uh, you know, ATF went in with the robotic devices to get the bombing materials out of the house. Um, it's hard to imagine a roommate not having some knowledge of that, but perhaps he didn't. If he did have not had knowledge of it, he had a duty to report that to law enforcement. And he also, if he had knowledge and did nothing, he's complicit with a conspiracy. And I think that's what they're looking at. Not unlike uh, Tim uh, Sernayev, the Boston bomber, mm -hmm. whose wife, when he was making pressure cooker bombs in the dining room table, uh, they never prosecuted her, but I think that's what they're looking at right now. Yeah, I mean, what kind of charges could be brought? I know it's still early on, but we had been told that both of the roommates had been questioned and released, so why mm -hmm. bringing one or two of them back into this whole conversation? Well, I don't want to get too much into uh, the investigation specific. I think one has been... Uh, not under consideration. I think they're still asking questions of the okay. second uh, roommate uh, as I speak. Charges that could be brought on them? Possibly. If possibly. Um, domestic terrorism, lots of discussion surrounding this. You said this weekend during a press conference with the police chief that there's simply a definition but no real charge when it comes to this and maybe there should be something mm -hmm. here. What would that look like? Yeah, well, I think, you know, irrespective of the legal definition, I, no one can question the fact that this serial bomber terrorized uh, the community of Austin and surrounding neighborhoods. And I live here, um, and, I, and a lot of people are asking me, you know, why, is, why did he right. do this? We don't know much about the motivation. We have the confession tape. But when it gets to, uh, there is a, uh, international terrorism is a charge if you're linked with a foreign terrorist organization like Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Domestic terrorism is just a legal definition uh, but not a charge in and of itself. So it's not a criminalized uh, uh, step by statute. It's just a definition that FBI will use to open a case up. Um, I think it would be, I talked to the FBI today about mm -hmm. this, uh, whether it would be helpful to possibly look at um, having a, charging, a charge of domestic terrorism uh, defined uh, by federal law. How difficult would that be in terms of, you know, getting that changed? And would that be something that you would, you know, push in Congress? How would that work? Well, I, I've asked the Congressional Research uh, Service, which does a lot of research for members to uh, study this issue and what would be the pros and cons of changing or why wasn't it historically made a, a, a charge rather than just a legal definition. Mm -hmm. But that, that's, 
Uh, when the FBI or APD is asked about the question, the fact is there are crimes uh, like a, a hate crime or explosive devices, murder charges that could have been filed that carry murder carries the ultimate penalty. But I think it's it's time. I think this case really, I think, does sort of cry out for Congress to look at whether we need to turn that legal definition into a a charge that could be brought by uh, federal law enforcement. What else can you tell us about the investigation? As you said, as everyone here in Austin and really uh, around the world, or it's just asking why. Any ideas to a motive? We've heard a lot about this 25-minute recording uh, mm -hmm. from the suspect. Best evidence we have is a 25-minute confession on his phone, which, by the way, survived the blast in the vehicle, which is amazing. He videoed him himself as a very dark uh, video. Uh, he claims I've been a psychopath all my life. You know, one in a hundred people are sociopaths. They have no remorse or conscience or guilt when they commit acts of murder, like in this case. Uh, so he had no remorse. And he also talked about how he wanted to end this entire nightmare uh, by blowing himself up in a McDonald's, which is uh, that the fact that our federal, state, and local uh, law enforcement cooperated so well to bring this to a final ending. Uh, to stop that kind of event from happening. You know, I, I praised them at the press conference. I went by the FBI today to give them a flag uh, to thank them. And I used to work with these guys when I was in the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Austin. And um, I, I tell you, from a national perspective, looking at this case is a textbook model of how, how it's supposed to be done rather than some other cases we've seen, like the Boston bombing, when things didn't go so well. A lot of questions still answered, and we will definitely be talking to you more about this as it proceeds. Congressman McCall, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And coming up next